Hello again and welcome to another War 40k Imperial Guard Tactics video. Now before we get into today's video, I would like to say a huge thank you to Andrew Kloss for sending in this awesome picture of his Imperial Guard in action against the Wolf and Spam. In fact, this was uh, Andrew's first game of 8th edition 40k. Unfortunately, he did lose it, but hopefully, Andrew, you learned lots and lots of interesting things and in the future you will know how to beat the Space Puppies. Uh, Wolf and Spam is a bit of a... A bit of a niche list, though. Though you do see it, so it can it can be a tough nut to crack with all those uh, feel no pains and storm shields and whatnot. And I imagine with the release of the space wolves, it's only going to get tougher. So um, you know, ha hard luck, hard luck, Andrew. But you know, your army does look beautiful. So uh, when it dies, at least it looks good doing it. If anyone else has got any cool pictures they want me to use in my videos, please post them on my Facebook page. There will be a link down in the description below. I always love showing off the hard work of my fellow Imperial Guard commanders. And if there's any sneaky cultists, genius of the cultist players out there, I may, I may show your pictures as well. And in fact, any cool pictures, I'm open, I'm open to any cool pictures these days, to be honest. So, without further ado, let's get into today's video. Now, I am doing another quick tip tactica video and we are going to be taking a look specifically specifically at one of the new stratagems employed in psychic awakening and we're going to be looking at head first and what i'm going to be doing is showing you the best ways to use this stratagem what are some of the crunchy combos that will allow you to get maximum effectiveness now before we start it's important to understand the exact wording of the stratagem so i'm just going to read that out now so it costs one command point and it says use the stratagem in your charge phase when a unit from your army is chosen to charge with until the end of that phase if that unit disembarked from my chimera unit this term when making a charge roll for that unit add two to the result so that is, um, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So what that means is you can uh, move your Chimera up and then next turn disembark from it and charge and get an extra two inches, which, which, is, which does allow you to connect against those enemy units. Now, I know some of you will be thinking straight away, well, how, how useful is that? How useful is that? Well, it's always good for one command point it's always good to get extra charge distance because no matter how close you might be, there's always that chance you'll mess it up. But what's most important about this is not just increasing your charge distance, but also increasing your ability to wrap and trap. Having an extra two inches on the charge roll means you can uh, quite effectively start wrapping around these. Because don't forget, you've also got your three inch pile in after that and your three inch consolidate and that's adding an extra two inches uh, to the first step of this which is you know you, you charge so it does it, it's always good it is always it is always good to have that it also means when you have to absolutely get one of those hail mary charges off you can do now the first thing to talk about is the different units that can benefit from this now when we talk assault units in the guard the first thing that jumps into our minds typically or my mind especially is things like ogrins and bulgrins wouldn't you say that's there they're your traditional guard assault units in eighth edition now the problem with ogrins and bulgrins and the stratagem is you can't take a big squad of them the most you can get your hands on is four you know that's the most ogrins you can fit in a chimera because they take up three slots each um so that's, you know, unfortunately not, not ideal. Uh, the next unit to be thinking about is uh, Crusaders. You know, Crusaders, um, you can take in you know, bigger squads and they all have power swords and they have storm shields. And so Crusaders would be a good choice to take with this unit. They've got the Ashman Time keyword. They can go in Chimeras. There's no issue with any of that whatsoever. Um, the good thing about Crusaders as well is that they are they are a good tar pitting unit. They're a good tar pitting unit. Um, the only disadvantage with Crusaders is that they are expensive points wise relatively to their you know relatively so what the what this sort of would allow you to do is get your crusader squad up close and start tar pitting and road blocking and speed bumping 
your opponent, but it is going to cost you a fair amount because you've got to add the cost of the Chimera on top of that as well. Now, what, what is what I actually think is very interesting about this stratagem is you can combine it with a couple of others uh, to get effectiveness from it. Now, what would be quite cool for a, a, a sneaky way of potentially getting a turn one charge off is if you take the Emperor's Blade Assault Company from Vigilus Defiant. Now, that is a specialist attachment, but it is a stratagem in there that's called Rapid Redeploy. Use This is one CP as well. Use the stratagem at the end of your movement phase. An Emperor's Blade unit embarked within an Emperor's Blade Chimera or Emperor's Blade Torox can disembark. That unit cannot move further in this phase, but can otherwise act normally for the rest of the turn. That unit counts as having moved for any rules purposes such as shooting heavy weapons. Let's just, just double check that. Use stratagem in the moon phase, embarked, can, yeah, yeah. So, so what you could do is you could move your Chimera forward and advance it, and then for one CP, rapid redeploy, get your guys out. Okay. Although, it's, oh, no, I don't know if you could do the advance. I don't know if you could do the advance, because I think if you advance... The thing is, the transport advances, I think the unit inside counts as advancing. So just forget the advance. You still move forward, your 12 inches with your Chimera, get out your 3 inches, and that's one, that's one CP. And then spend another CP in the charge phase and charge with that with a, with a squad of guys. Now, yes, it would only be a 10-man infantry squad. But if your opponent has something like whirlwinds, you know, Marines are all Marines in their whirlwinds. I know the Devastated Doctrine has been nerfed somewhat, but let me tell you, they're, they're still pretty powerful. And the ability to get into the enemy, you know, to the enemy's uh, units and, and lock them up or make them have to try and fall back. That is, for a couple of CP, that is not to be underestimated, not to be underestimated at all. However, I think one of the best ways to take advantage of this is to actually is to actually form what what is is to actually form a big 20 man assault blob okay so how you do this is you take your couple of chimeras and you put um because i think what because the, the problem before i get into this the problem with the ogrins and the bulgrins is that there's not enough of them to really have a a major killing impact yeah they get a bit of extra charge distance but whatever um and the problem with crusaders is whilst they can do the tarpeting they are quite expensive they can't benefit from things like orders um and then the problem with doing the rapid redeploy all these are valid tactics but the problem with then doing the rapid redeploy one is you're just slingshotting up a 10-man infantry squad that's not that hard for your opponent to sweep away and you may not wrap and trap effectively because I think the, the thing with this stratagem is you want to be not necessarily using it as a first turn hammer blow, but more of a wrapping and trapping and getting in your, you know, just getting in your opponent's face and annoying the hell out of him. I think this is the best way of using it. And if you're using a mechanized force anyway, this is, this is, this is, this is a good, uh, good card to have up your sleeve so the best way i would use this actually take a couple of infantry squads either go catacham or my now what i believe to be the superior combat choice well we is there's lord's approval and um slum fighters custom regiment and what you want to do is take a couple of these squads and put a priest in one of the chimeras you know, put a piece of one of the cameras and then actually make that a, an Emperor's Conclave Infantry Company. Because you can't, the thing is, you can't, you can't take advantage of the rapid redeploy if you're doing this strategy. Because you're doing it with two squads, at least two squads. And what you do is you drive your chimeras up into the enemy's face. I'd use three, assuming one's going to die. Okay, so you drive your chimeras up into the enemy's face and you pop smoke. You pop smoke. And that makes it harder for your opponents to kill them. Your next turn, you then jump out your three inches. At the end of the movement phase, combine two of your infantry squads together. You've got a priest nearby as well. You've given each one of those squads power sword and sergeant, potentially. 
or you're just running them bare bones, you're just wrapping and trapping. And then you just go for the charge. And you just charge in, because you've met, you've combined both squads together, both squads have disembarked from a Chimera, so there can't be any of this, well, what if one squad has it and one squad has No, both squads disembarked from a Chimera. You charge in, and you've got, you know, if you do this with Catachans, you could, you could have Strachan in there as well to give them an extra attack. And what you've got is you've got a blob of 20 guys, which are going to be able, which is a, a big footprint. 20 man footprint is going to be able to wrap and trap anything. And that's going to be able to wrap and trap easily anything. 20 guys, and they've all got extra attacks. And because you've got Empress Conclave Infantry Company, you can take a field commander and you can give them reroll hit rolls of one when they're in the fight phase. And you can do, you could even use no quarter given so that if they if they die they still get to fight. And you can use sanctimonious charge if you get your priest to make that charge first. Then um, the everyone else gets to reroll the charge distance. Which is a couple of ways you could play that off. You could either use the reroll on. You could either use the the head first on the priest to guarantee him to get in, and then use the reroll on the other guys for one CP. That's like the main charge on the Emperor's Inf Conclave Infantry Company. So you see there's a couple of ways you can play this, a couple of ways you can use it. And that's how I would, that's how, that, would that would be the way I would do it. Now, am I saying, just to clarify, because I know there's going to be some people saying this is a waste of time. Right. As with all these quick tip tactics that I do, they're not an auto-include. They're not necessarily an auto-include. Those Sentinel videos and the Mordian and Laz kind of videos that I did last week, you know, they're good, but they're not necessarily something you're going to build your whole army around. They're not necessarily an auto include. What they, this one especially, this one especially is just something to have up your sleeve, a trick to have up your sleeve. Because yes, there will be some armies that you'll face, which they're going to be coming to you, and you're not going to be needing to worry about getting an extra couple of inches on the charge distance. <laughs> no, 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 no. But there will be some armies which you're going to want to have to close that distance quickly. And if you're running an assault infantry force, or if you're just running a, catag a mechanized catagen force, mechanized catagen force is not uncommon. You've got all the rerolls on the heavy bolters, or the heavy bolters, on the heavy weapons. You've got double flame chimeras. Not uncommon. Not uncommon. They, those things are, those things turn up in every, you know, every, every tournament. There's one of those things, if you, if you see a guard army out there. So they're not, they're not uncommon. And um, so as a mechanized commander, knowing about this ability you're not going to use it every battle but it might just save your bacon in one of those battles it might just be something that, that is the winning factor what if you're coming up against a tower gun line you're coming up against a tower gun line and you need you need to you need to wrap up a bunch of those fire warriors you know and you know that if you even if you just wrap even if you just wrap and trap one squad the tower really not going to be happy about having 20 guard combat infantry in their midst. But if you've trapped them, there's nothing they can do about it. That's what's so good about this tactic, because you get 20 men into them, you might lose a couple on Overwatch and a couple in combat, but let's say you've still got a roughly 20 man blob, which the enemy can only shift in combat. Because then you're gonna butcher that in your turn, what you're gonna do, you know, against this, you know, other Imperial Guard armies, against, um, other shooty armies you're going to get the charge off wrap and trap kill a few you know but always you know try and make sure there's at least one one guy there that you can trap and then in your turn you're going to have an officer nearby you're going to go all right fix bayonets in the shooting phase smash them just 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 kill what you're in combat with guess what it comes to the, your next charge phase it's at that same turn after you've after you've you've smashed them in, in the shooting phase with fixed bayonets you get to charge again and you get to wrap and trap again if the enemy's not close. You you could seriously, seriously dent a flank with little more than a couple of infantry squads and a priest and a platoon commander. Not expensive. You keep all that bare bones. You keep all that bare bones. You're looking at 80 points to the infantry squads. You're looking at a priest to give an extra attack. They're already, they're already getting exploding sixes if you're going Lord's Approval. Not Lord's Approval, Slum Fighters. They're already getting exploding sixes. They're getting high volume of, uh, of attacks. They're re-rolling ones. And um, yeah, so that's 20 guys. That's, that's, that's going to make a dent. And that's what? That's that's 135 points. You have to add the cost of the Chimera. I haven't forgotten that. But you keep that cheap. 
You're looking at maybe another 150. Sub 300 points, guys. Sub 300 points. And you've got yourself another one of these little little uh, combo little combo forces. You combine this with those Mordian Laz cannons. You've got some good, you've got some good shooting firebase. And with your Sentinels, you know you're able to do that first turn Alpha Punch. All these tactics that we've talked about. You know it's like 200 points for the Mordian one. Two, it was th less than 300 points for the Sentinels. Less than 300 points. This you've got all. You've got th we've, the, the last few videos I've done. You've got three crunchy combos there. And you've got them all for what less than 800 points. You've got 1,200 points that you can just put into your other stuff that we haven't even thought about yet. And you, that's if you take every single one of these combinations. You might not do that. You probably won't do that. You probably would take two of the three, you know, the Sentinels and the Mordias, the Sentinels and the Mechanized Assault Infantry. But, you know, there's nothing... It's, it's, a, good, it's a good tactic. Um, and it's a good thing to have at the back of your mind it's not going to come up every battle but when it does you've got to be aware of the of the the wider tactical implications it could have so there you go guys let me know what you think down in the comment section below it's a cheap tactic it's not particularly convoluted uh it's a couple of cp um you know as we've, we've talked about the different tiers of doing this you know um tier one is just a priest and a couple of infantry squads and a couple of chimeras tier two is priest platoon commander and you're building your regiment around this tactic and then tier three you start looking at taking the emperor's conclave infantry company and that's when you start having to you know spend a couple of extra cp but even then you're only spending one extra cp to take that detachment and one extra cp for the uh, for the field commander to do it and then you might do the one extra cp for sanctimonious charge you might do that or for two cp for no quarter given the the tiers in this strategy in in the other videos we talked about tiers and it being related to points values the points values for this change very little that most you'll be spending two chimeras 200 squads of priests and a platoon commander and maybe strachan you know that's that's the most you'll spend but the tiers with this one, the the gold, the silver, the platinum that we were talking about before, the platinum levels we talked about in the videos, they're more about how much CP you're willing to funnel into this thing, not necessarily how many points you're willing to shove into it. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know how far would you take it? Would you go the full hog? Would you go Strachan, Priest? Uh, yeah, you would need the platoon commander in that case, but Strachan, Priest, two Chimeras, Inf Emperor's Conclave, infantry squad all that stuff would you go as far as that or would you just go two infantry squads priest platoon commander nothing else no empress conclave no 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 katachan not even building your regiment around it just keep it in the back of your mind which which tier which level which point do you think on the sliding scale do you think it's it, this is the most effective uh effective investment for this personally i think this works quite well in just a generic mechanized infantry force. I think it just I think it just works well. I wouldn't necessarily build my entire uh, regiment around it because I would focus on this more from a wrapping and trapping tactical advantage rather than from a raw damage output. That would be my thinking. But what do you guys think out there? I think this works naturally with Katachans as well. But there we go. So. What do you guys think? Leave lots of comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and of course I'll see you guys next time.